now. So that is a, that is happening. And we'll have some, uh, oh, wonderful and a very, uh, very good timing. And Linda, we may later tonight try what the one student suggested, uh, burst the students into um, well, different groups. We'll just, you know, kind of divide them someday, some way. And uh, you thought we knew how to do this, so we might try that tonight to see what happens. Okay. Okay. And we'll either say, oh, that was a great success, or we may say, let's not do that again. We'll figure that out. All okay, right. So this is the 29th. Go to the next slide, please, Linda. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to start out with some cockpit commentary then. Um, we're on track and on schedule. We're doing um, physics like we're supposed to be. We're making progress. Um, in the best of all worlds, we could perhaps be finished with chapter two tonight. We'll see how that goes. But anyway, we're on track and certainly on schedule. Uh, <clears throat> now, um, this is always, we have a tendency to be bumpy, things like that. Some of my students end up catching COVID and their family catches COVID. And, you know, so there's all kinds of stuff going on. So you want to be careful out there and certainly in this class, keep your seat belts fastened and tray tables stowed. But Linda and I know how to fly this plane. We know how to land this plane, and everybody's going to be okay. All right. So things are um, good from this end. I'm going to let Linda say something later if she wants to. Actually, Linda can always talk whenever she wants to, but there's a slot here that's for Linda. Uh, we are at the end of week 10. And we have more or less 16 or 17 weeks. And it depends on how you count final week, how you count Thanksgiving. But we're moving right along, okay? Um, midterms are in the rearview mirror and so on and so forth. Uh, so that is uh, um, good to know. That's where we are and we're on track and on schedule. Now, this coming Tuesday is election day. And this is the first year... I think this has ever been a national holiday. Certainly, this is the first time that the College of DuPage ever recognized it as a um, holiday. And so, on Tuesday, this uh, coming up Tuesday, there will be no VCM class. And Linda, this is a little different than what I talked to you about, uh, but it's no VCM. Um, you can show up here. If you want, and you can go into the Collaborate Ultra and work with other people and things like that, but neither Linda nor I will be here, okay? Um, and, because, uh, and so you're welcome to come, but nobody's taking attendance that night. And there will be no lecture <clears throat> that night. However, um, you can do math every day, even when the College of DuPage isn't here, and you guys, even in the VCM, also are supposed to be watching the net videos. So don't be surprised if there's announcements and there's things for you to do, but you don't have to be this hour and 15 minutes. You don't have to be in this uh, in this uh, cyber room and things like that. But we can certainly be doing net videos. And in fact, um, I was working very hard to accommodate students and give midterms and grade midterms and junk like that. Uh, but uh, I'm looking at that being in the rear view mirror now. I'm happy about that. Uh, but uh, looking ahead, uh, I'm probably going to be doing a much more aggressive job of uh, publishing videos for you guys to watch. So, you know, hang in there for, uh, for that. Um, <clears throat> okay, Linda, let's do, uh, you know, whatever kind of wellness poll you want to do good. I guess great and let's see struggling okay and great uh, I, I think Linda is mixing those up too that's good so you don't always say oh I will punch one that's good so everybody please weigh in we'll see how you all are
Well, I think we've watched this enough. I don't see it moving much. And so uh, I'm going to say those of you who are okay, uh, I, you know, I'm glad of that. Uh, those who are struggling, uh, <clears throat> I, I mean, I, I guess there's a couple of ways. Actually, somebody the other day uh, asked me if I was struggling. And uh, I told them I, I was doing good enough, but everybody is struggling these days. So if you were saying that you were struggling because you have friends who have COVID or, you know, something like that, you know, I feel um, uh, bad about uh, that. And I, you know, I hope things will get better. But uh, if you're struggling in this class, Linda and I know how to fix that. And so does Tom Topol. And so you can go and, um, you know, and get help and, and get uh, fixed up uh, with that uh, if you're struggling because of this class. Uh, Linda is not, uh, Linda is doing research, but she is not doing research on a COVID uh, vaccine, I don't think, anyway. <laughs> so <clears throat> so uh, what will happen is, you, uh, you know, um, we, we can't cure you of that, but we, uh, and, and some of the things, if you're struggling, some things are out of our scope, but we certainly can help you with that. Now, <clears throat> there are a bunch of low stakes assessments floating around out there. Is this low stakes assessment eight, which I'm going to be publishing a video solution to also. Um, Linda, there's a low stakes assessment nine, and I did not uh, share this with Linda. I was going to ask her this, so it's okay if she doesn't have an answer for this. Uh, but that's um, that, and, and I'm just asking because I don't know. That's been, po I know we talked about it in the last VCM. That's been posted and uh, and it's it's there for people to you know do and turn in and stuff, right? It is not yet. I'll be posting it tomorrow. Okay, and and again, I'm not, and that'll affect when it's available. Uh, but tonight, I'm going to show you low stakes ten, uh, low stakes assessment ten, and you know we're going to be doing that too. Okay, so um, so anyway, that's there. Uh, okay, I'm just going to pause here for uh, uh, a moment, Linda, and if there's anything you want to you know tell the students or mention or anything else. This is your time, Linda. So I have heard from a few people that the GSG has been very helpful for them, but today nobody showed up. So I'm kind of surprised that we're getting people who are saying that they're struggling, but you guys aren't coming to the GSG. <clears throat> so just throwing that out there that, I mean, that's basically an entire hour that we can just sit and talk about all this stuff. So if you're trying to get help, then that's an excellent time to do it. And Linda, I know some students, I think anyway, uh, visit you in, I don't know what you call this, drop-in tutoring or some such thing. It's, yeah, it's people not also GFD. go to that. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, good. Uh, let's see. Josh is asking a question. Josh, I'm recognizing you. Hi, yeah. Um, good evening. How do we get to the drop-in tutoring? The drop-in tutoring can be found in your student support tab. So if you kind of look at Blackboard and click on the student support tab next to my institution, then all the way on the right under 2020 fall online tutoring, then there's a whole bunch of different tutoring options. The one I'm talking about is the daily drop-in tutoring from Mondays through Thursdays. If you just click on the little blue link that says access drop-in, and that's how you can get in there. Now, Linda, I might be asking a question. Perfect. Thank you. That, that is, uh, I'm trying to build upon that. Uh, can you jump out of this and show that for Josh and everybody, or is that like really hard to do? No, I can absolutely do that. All right, would you would you do that for them and for me? Okay. So I have my student support tab open right here. So normally when you log into Blackboard, then you're on my institution. So student support tab is right on this upper right hand corner. You click on that. And what I'm talking about is the Learning Commons tutoring services right over here. So this blue link that says access drop in, if you click on that, then that'll take you right into the Blackboard Collaborate session that we have for tutoring. Now is that, and that's always, when I when I say that, uh, Linda, that's you sometimes, and it's somebody else other times, or is that different? Or how? Yeah. Okay. It's me on Mondays from 11 to 3, 
on Wednesdays from 10 to 3 and Thursdays from 11 to 3. And it's other good people other times. but uh, Yeah, and they do a whole variety of subjects as well. So it's not just math. You can get help for just about anything. Okay. And I also do math tutoring on Monday and Wednesday nights from 6 to 8 that you can access by clicking this link right here. Josh, does that give you at least a way to look here? Oh, absolutely. That just widened my horizons. All right, that's excellent. And uh, and, and and Josh, you're always welcome to visit me at uh, <laughs> 6:30 in the morning, or, or you know, anytime actually. But uh, that's when I'm uh, hanging out uh, there. Thank you, Linda. Uh, that was good. And hmm. All right, I guess I'm throwing this out. And Josh already started this, and that, and thank you for that. Uh, you know, asking a question. I'm going to pause for maybe a beat at five, and if people got questions, then maybe we'll uh, hear them. If not, we'll just uh, move on. Okay, I can talk to I can count to five pretty fast, uh, so that is uh, that is good. By the way, I mean, I, this, uh, Linda, I will tell you this: um, I worked the summer after I graduated from high school. Uh, I worked for the phone company, and that ended up being a bit of a preview for my career at Bell Labs. But anyway, this is before I was going off to college, and I was working with some people who were very good folks, uh, but they had not gone to college. And uh, I remember working this one, with this one young fella. He said, uh, so what do you think you might study at college? And I said, well, I think I might study math. He says, well, what do they do there, teach you how to count real fast? And I told him, yeah, maybe. So anyway, uh, let's go to the next slide. Now this I'm just showing you is you ought to almost have this done or something. This I think is low stakes assessment eight, I think. Linda, go to the next slide, please. This is low stakes assessment nine. It's a, that's going to be posted and there'll be due dates and stuff like that. And I think that'll happen, you know, later this week. And you know, you'll get announcements and stuff like that. So that'll all be good. And then let's see next. We talked about that last time. Now, <clears throat> here is what is low stakes assessment ten, and we're in the tenth week. And I told you we were on track and on schedule. So here's another low stakes assessment, and this will get you know posted. And uh, you know, you can work on this um, on the election night uh, while you're watching returns or something. I'm going to read this for you, and this is what your, your textbook calls a bridging problem. But bridging problem means that this is looking ahead. Okay, so this is uh, this is looking ahead, and but you know I'm assigning it now, and you know we'll have it due sometime. I'm going to read this to you. I've already read low stakes assessment uh, eight and nine to you. I'm now reading low stakes assessment uh, ten to you. <clears throat> A model rocket is fired straight up from the top of a 50, miller, uh, 50 meter tall building. The rocket only has enough fuel to burn for two seconds. But while the rocket engine is burning fuel, it produces an upward acceleration of 50 meters per second squared. Now, I think this to me is a little bit, um, I guess, ambiguous. And so I'm going to say, that it produces, I'm, go, I'm just gonna say it does exactly what it says. But you see, since the rocket engine is an upward acceleration of 50 meters per second squared, we talked a little bit about this, gravity is pulling this down. So that is not a net 50 meters per second squared. That's what the engine's doing, but gravity is sucking it down a bit. And so, you know, keep that in mind. Um, I, I think that clarification can be useful. Okay. After the fuel supply is exhausted, the rocket is in free fall. That means it just starts, in, uh, you know, gravity is the only thing working on it. There's no other acceleration. And it just misses the edge of the building as it falls back to the ground. Ignoring air resistance. And I'll tell you another thing that's getting ignored uh, here. Actually, I don't think that matters. Never mind. Pretend I didn't say that. Ignoring air resistance, calculate, these are the answers you want to have, the height above the ground and the velocity of the rocket when its fuel runs out. See, we have equations that allow us to do that. We'll be talking about some of those tonight. Part D, 
Maximum height of the rocket, how far does it go up? Part C, the time the rocket is in the air, how long is it in the air? And it's in the air going up and it's in the air coming down. And notice that it doesn't hit the top of the 50 meter building. So it goes up, but then it goes all the way to the ground and hits the ground. So that it, that the you know the uh, time elapsed is in the air. And last part D, uh, the rocket's velocity, the moment before it hits the ground. And I would say that that really means the instant before it hits the ground. Okay, so I guess that I, you know I've read it. It'll be there. Linda will be posting that. And so you know we 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 do have low stakes assessments to work on, and you can get help on these. You know it's it's the um, take home protocols on these, and, and it, this is all about learning. Okay, Linda, let's uh, let's advance the slide and see what happens. Uh, when do you want this one to be due? Um, Linda, you have the ball on this. Okay, so Linda, why don't you speculate? And Linda is, is maybe speculating in a, in, a, in a tandem fashion because she's still posting LSA 9 and so on and so forth. So what do you want to say, Linda? So with LSA 9 being due on that Tuesday, I'm thinking either the 5th or maybe the Tuesday after that, the 10th. Okay, and Linda will advise specifically like that, but, you know, it's got – we're still in we're not even at halloween yet and so you know you've got there, there is some time but i wouldn't mess around with that because uh, i think i'll probably have low stakes assessments 11 and so on and so forth also so you don't want to just say that that's not the end of <clears throat> low stakes assessment well let's shoot for the fifth then just to keep everyone on track okay excellent let's um let's advance the slide and see what else is uh, in, in in store for us Uh, Dimpy is saying yes. When is LSA 10 due? And Linda, what did you say? Uh, November 5th. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Linda. Okay. <clears throat> and I am watching the clock here, and I don't know. These are all good problems to do. Uh, Linda, I'm going to let you uh, pick one of these two, five, or. And now Dimpy wants to know uh, about LSA 9, Linda. LSA 9 is due the Tuesday before that, so November 3rd. That's election night, but you see, you can, you can, you know, submit it, and then you can go vote and stuff like that, so that's good. Um, okay. And, so and each of those you have a week to do. Yeah. Okay, so we're, uh, we're good with that. Okay, so Linda, we can either do 2, 5, or 7, pick one. I don't so much care. Let's do 7, then. All right, 7. I will read 7. And we'll go to <clears throat> a solution in a bit. You are considering buying a European car. I want to see if it's advertised fuel efficiency, and that's going to be measured as they would in Europe and many parts of the world in kilometers per liter. It's better than your present car. Uh, if your car gets 37.5 miles per hour, it's better than my Civic, uh, which gets about 25. Uh, so it's 37.5 miles per gallon. How many kilometers uh, per liter is this? And by the way, if we, if Linda and I were to ask you a question like this, uh, we would give you grace notes with stuff in it. But in your book, there's an Appendix D, so that's where we're going to pull some of this uh, material from. Now, Linda, the next slide I think will be problem two. Uh, no, it's problem 13. That, that's all right. We are going to look at 13. There's problem two. Don't worry about that. That's a solution. There's a solution to five, but Linda wanted to do seven. That means you students should look at those. We're, we're just, you know, going through here. This is number seven. Okay, so here is uh, the things. And, well, I can do the pencil thing, can't I, Linda? You can. I'll try that. Okay, so here we go. Uh, first of all, these are things. That would either be in grace notes or you can look in the back of your book or you know linda can google these and stuff but we don't have to because they're here so this tells us that <clears throat> um a kilometer is a little more than six tenths of a mile and we'll use that number a gallon um 
is um, just under four liters. So that means a liter is more or less like a, a, like a quart. Uh, I mean, it's pretty close to a quart. Uh, and I just um, ordered some takeout for my uh, for my daughter and me. Uh, and I'm going to try to eat that takeout in between the end of this class and my office hours at 730. Uh, but I ordered uh, two liters of Diet Dr. Pepper, one for her and one for me. So anyway, that's about a quart. OK, so anyway, here's the solution then. This is, a, this is dimensional analysis. So what you're going to do is take this 37.5 miles per gallon, and you need to change that into uh, kilometers because we want to compare this with the fuel efficiency of the other uh, car. So uh, I'm changing this to kilometers. I want the miles to black with each other. So this one's in the numerator. This one's in the denominator. So we cancel that. And now, <coughs> excuse me, units are going to be kilometers per gallon. You see this gallon was in the, uh, was in the denominator. Then we want to have kilometers per liter. So that means we want the gallons to cancel. So this is the conversion factor that we have up here. So it's one gallon per 3.788 liters. This gallon is in the denominator. I'm doing a double whack on that one. And this is in the numerator, so we'll double whack that. And this is going to be kilometers per liter. And if you pound that into your calculator, you get this. Now, some of you might say, I pounded that in my calculator and got a different answer. That's because this thing over here has only three significant digits. So you're going to have only have three significant digits here in your answer. But the units are going to, and by the way, I'm not going to hold you super responsible for that. Don't round off until the end of the problem and don't round off too much. Um, but, you know, I'll be, I'll be gentle with that as I'm gentle with a lot of things. And Linda, I think... Uh, in fact, I guess we could go back, but I think this is a lower fuel efficiency than that car you were comparing against, but I don't remember the number. I don't think they tell us what it was. Uh, maybe not. Let's go back and look. Yeah, they don't. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I was, I was, I, I don't know, I was thinking about another one. I would probably, well, if I wrote the problem, I'd probably do it differently. Okay, that's good. Uh, so number seven, let's go back to the solution. <clears throat> then I want to pause and ask if people have questions about that. Uh, and uh, Sydney has a question, so Sydney, go ahead. And Linda, <clears throat> so I'm going to we, take a drink of water, so I'll probably ask you to answer Sydney's question. Go ahead, Sydney. Okay. Um, so would you times would you times all three of those numbers together or just the 0.6214 and the 3.788 to get the 15.9? So when you multiply fractions, you multiply straight across. Now remember that 37.5 actually has a denominator of one. Mm -hmm. So you'd be doing 37.5 over that 0.6214 times 3.788 oh and then when you're doing a conversion do you have to mul it's always you're always multiplying across like there's not any equal signs or anything like that yeah so all we're doing is just canceling the units as we go okay okay cool thank you and later on when you know i make up a a, a test maybe linda glance at it and you know warns you that oh there's dimensional analysis on it this is dimensional analysis, what we just were doing. Now, let's go back to that problem 13, please, uh, okay. and the statement of it. Yeah, there, thank you. Now, this was the thing that, I, uh, that we talked about last time. And uh, I told you the story about when I burnt my hand when I was a kid and things like that. But your nerve impulses do travel at different speeds. Uh, and so touch which is a very sensitive thing. It travels at 76.2 meters per second. And pain travels slower. OK. Um, there's probably some evolutionary reason for that to be the case. But anyway, that's what we've got. And Linda, I might ask you to 
uh, you know, uh, memorize those numbers when we uh, go to work this, <clears throat> and um, uh, and 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 also ask you to uh, to perhaps, um, you know, have a calculator nearby. But I will talk about this one. Okay. So anyway, the story goes on. If a person stubs his toe, I guess, find the time for each impulse to reach the brain and the time delay between the pain and the touch. And we assume that the brain is 1.85 meters from the toe and the impulse travels directly from the toe to the brain. And in physics, they make a lot of assumptions like that. So Linda, I'm gonna suggest you go to, uh, I think it's probably, the, I don't know if it's the next slide, just go till you find a blank slide. There's a blank slide, more or less. I know it has a 13 on it. But here we are. Okay, now the big equation here is just distance is equal to velocity times time. Okay, and so I think uh, what the problem asks us to do, and Linda will keep me honest, but it um, asks us to uh, find the time. Okay, so the time. And this is the time for the touch. Then, well, we would solve for that, and you, you studied this in, like in your algebra class, and I think this was 1.85 was yep. the distance that you needed to travel, and that was meters because units matter. And the velocity, and this is for the touch, I think this was 76.2. Two. Yep. Yeah. Not bad for an old man. Okay. So it was 76.2. And this is meters per second. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to ask Linda, <laughs> please, to pound that into her calculator and tell me what is the number, please. I'm getting 0 0.024 seconds. Okay. And Linda already did the um, old units for you. But the thing you might want to think about here is, you see, this is meters divided by, that's a division thing meters per second and like linda said this is meters over one when you divide fractions you invert and multiply okay so this is m over one we invert that that is s over m and the m's whack one with another so you do get seconds for the unit and by the way that's not very long okay okay so now we will talk about touch for pain Okay, so this is pain. Okay, the person still is 1.85 meters. And I think, Linda, that was 0. 0.6 something? 0. 0.610. That's a decimal point. You guys are a medical profession, and the medical profession, they're really picky, they say. And that's fine. They should be. Uh, but they want you to have the zero in front of that. And again, this is still, the units work exactly like the other units did. So this is going to be seconds. And Linda will maybe pound that into a calculator for us and uh, tell us what she got. I'm getting 3.033 .03 seconds. Okay, now you might remember, I said, gee, I put my hand on that electric burner, and I thought, oh, damn, I bet that's going to be hot. But you see, I didn't feel the pain until a bit later after I felt the touch. And they ask us to calculate, I think they did in the problem, calculate the delay. So we're going to take yeah. this number here minus that number here. And you certainly can do this with your calculator. If you're doing this by hand, you'd line up the decimal points. So, Linda, the delay is what? 
3.009. Okay, so you see, I was sitting there with my hand on that. I'm going to round it off that way. That's seconds. Um, delay. I'm writing more and more like a two-year-old as we go along. Uh, okay. Uh, but but you see, yeah, my, my hand sat there for a while before I felt the pain, but then I felt it, and, you know, uh, I don't do that anymore. Okay, uh, Linda, let's go to the next slide and see what to, see what that holds, please. Okay, now, Linda, we're about ready to bust people into groups, or at least we're going to try that. And Linda and I did not rehearse this at all, so we'll see how it works, and at the end of this, um, you know, um, you guys might say, boy, I, I hated that. Or you might say, oh, this was really good. Or, you know, I don't know. And we'll see how it does. So, Linda, of course, you're, you are you want to be mindful somehow of how many people are here. And we'll figure out how many jars to put them in and so on and so forth. I, I, and and I, I don't even know how, how long we're going to do this. And, Linda, you do know how to do this, right? Yes. Good. Okay. And, and by the way, I when, when I start... Um, let's go back to that. Uh, the question. The delay is, was 3.01 seconds. And I rounded that off. Yeah. In physics, it works that way. Okay, good. And again, that's great that you're asking questions. You should. Uh, I threw this slide in uh, because I thought you guys should uh, know what MCAT stood for. It stands for Medical College Admission Test. You see, this is a test, and I. And actually, I never wanted to go to medical school. That was one thing I never wanted to do. Um, but anyway, um, and maybe the medical profession is better off for that. Uh, but anyway, I, so I was not interested in taking the uh, MCAT. I did take graduate record exams, and I took all, and I took uh, GMATs, and I took all kinds of stuff and, and, and tests. But it was uh, it was not this. This is something that people look at to see, oh, do we think you're good enough to go to med school? So if you get a sucky score here, that's not good on, med, uh, on, on the MCAT. Now, the, the reason I'm mentioning this is that uh, in your book, there are some problems that are MCATs, and that's what we're going to look at, okay, uh, some of them from time to time. And you might say, well, why are you doing that? Well, um, they're there, but more than that, your certification exams that you will take in um, ultrasound things, um, and I'm talking about like state certifications and stuff like that, will be multiple choice tests. And I don't give multiple choice tests, but I know how come the MCATs are multiple choice tests. I know how come the ultrasounds are multiple choice tests is because nobody's grading those for partial credit. You're saying they're right or wrong. And they want to run it through there in a batch. So, you know, we'll we'll do a little bit of this. But what you want to do is don't guess, or at least I'm going to say, don't guess. Think about doing some calculations, okay? Now, and, and so, um, uh, Linda, let's go to the next slide then. That, oh, wait, no, before we leave that, if you look up there, you can see, wow, the MCAT has all kinds of graphs. It has normal distributions and things like that. You see, there's a lot of statistics there in this, and that's one of the things that's good about, you know, what uh, Linda and I um, oh, have uh, tried to teach you the first half of this course. Let's go, Linda, Linda, to the next slide. All right. Now, this is called MCAT style passage problems. So that means, and by the way, that when, when, when your author um, calls those passage problems, they're saying, oh, yeah, well, this is at the end of a chapter, so I'll just give them an MCAT-style passage problem, and, and it's a passage problem, meaning, gee, you did, chapter, you did chapter one, so you ought to be able to, you know, give this a go and come up with this. Now, I'm not going to tell you these are easy, and I'm not telling you physics is easy either. It's different. But anyway, we have these. I'm going to read this to you. And Linda's probably counting people and thinking about how she's breaking you into groups while I'm reading it. How many so, groups do you want? Just two? How many students do we have? Uh, Fifteen. I'll leave that to you to figure out, okay? Well, I mean, you, you can do what you want, and it will be fine, Linda, whatever you do, okay? 
Uh, but when when you, we put you in your groups, you don't want to go in and just say, wow, um, I'm just going to sit here. Uh, you know, you, you want to talk and things like that. But also, we're not going to spend the entire period doing this. I, I, I don't know. We'll see how this works. Uh, but the, I, I know one student suggested I thought it was a good idea. Um, but I also realized there's difficulties in doing things like this. And it's, uh, it's, it's probably doubly difficult doing it in Zoom. It, it might be a disaster, but we tried it. Anyway, here's the deal. This is a biology thing, which is what a, a lot of the MCAT is. So you're calculating lung volume in humans. In human lungs, oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged in the blood within many sacs called, well, Linda, do you know how to say that? Alveoli. Okay, good. Uh, I, <laughs> you see, I only took one biology course in my life. And that was in high school. Um, oh, but I am going to tell you, biology is good. And if I uh, were going back and studying something, I'd want to study neuroscience or things like that. I do really cool math at the National Institute of Health, and uh, I, I would I would like to be working on you know things that are um, oh interesting like that. So someday I might go back and and study it. And uh, and DNA actually is a double helix and stuff. So some really good stuff there. I just didn't study it much. Uh, okay, uh, so those things then uh, you cut it. You call that alveola? Alveoli. Al alveoli. Okay, I'm probably just going to call it an A thing then. It provides a large surface area for gas exchange. Recent careful measurements show that the total number of these things in a typical human lung is about 4.8 times 10 to the sixth. Now that means there's 480 million of these suckers flying around in your uh, lungs. That's an important number, and so you, you see you do have scientific notation. And that the average volume of one of these things is 4.2 times 10 to the sixth micro cubic meters. That's a volume. Now micro is 10 to the minus six. So you see all of these things are kind of flying at you. And recall the equation for the volume of a sphere. We're going to pretend they're spheres. Uh, is four thirds pi r cubed. And uh, let's see. And the equation for the area of a sphere. Now this doesn't. You might say, what does it mean, area of a sphere? This is the surface area of a sphere. And if this were a math class, I would have said that. Um, but this is just what they say. This is the surface of the sphere. Is a is equal to four pi r squared. Okay, so um, there are one, two, looks like three uh, problems, Linda. They're multiple choice. Um, I'm going to let Linda tell you how long you will have to do this, and um, and uh, you know how 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 this will happen in groups and stuff like that. You want to have calculators? You want to be able to look at this too, but of course you can in the groups, I think. So Linda, go ahead. You have the ball. Okay, so I'm making three groups of five. You guys are just going to be randomly assigned, and I'm not sure if it'll pop up immediately, so I'm going to kind of go from group to group and make sure you guys have the power so you can look at it, okay? Now, what what I want you guys to do is, and, and Linda, how long are you going to give them? And again, I, you know, I, I don't know. You see, if this is a disaster, I don't want people just sitting there for a long time in a disaster. There's three questions. Uh, there's a lot of calculations. Uh, some groups would maybe divide this up. But anyway, what I'd like for you guys to do is try to come up with an answer on this. Sometimes you can eliminate answers. So, Linda, how long do you think we should try this little trial thing? Try like six minutes or so. Okay, so you will be in there six minutes. And, Linda, um, you have the ball again. So just make All it right. need to happen. Okay, I'm going to go join some groups and make sure that they can see what's going on. Okay, and I'll just let you um, join every group, okay? Okay.
Hey, Jessica. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, Jessica, uh, we, we broke into some groups, and to tell you the truth, the groups are supposed to be back in three minutes, and Linda's out there somewhere. I don't know where she – I mean, she's – She's in one of the groups or something. So why don't you just kind of hang here? And again, I you know I would have put you in a group if um, you know uh, you had been here when we broke it up. But, but anyway, uh, Linda Shaw now has joined group two. He's not moving through those groups too quickly. Uh, but anyway, this is the problem, Jessica, that you that you I think can see here. That's what the groups are working on. There are three problems there, and and they're thinking about all of them. Uh, so you know I I would suggest just read it. Um, the people are supposed to be back now in two minutes, so we'll see how Linda's maybe spending more time in this, and that's okay. I'm letting her do it. But the best I, I would say is read this. I, and I am just going to ask, how are you? I asked people how they were before, but I, I don't know if you were here then or not. How are you? You doing okay? Yes, I'm doing okay. But, I just okay. had a patient. <laughs> okay, well, no, I, I, I do understand. So anyway, here's the... Here's uh, just, you know, read this and think about them a bit. And one day Linda will be back. Perfect. And how are you? Um, I'm good enough. Okay. Uh, everybody is struck. I mean, everybody's struggling with, you know, everybody's got different struggles, but yeah. you know, everybody's got struggles that are happening now. Uh, but I'm, um, I'm in good health and everybody kind of around me is in good health. And, uh, I get to study math and work with you guys, so you know I'm better off than many. So I count my I blessings. Agree. I agree. All right, I'm gonna look this uh, these questions over. Thank you. Uh, yeah, please just go ahead. I do have a question. So our um, our finals are they going to be like a multiple choice type thing, or they're going to no, be right? No, no, no. Uh, and I don't. I didn't mean no, no, no. But the answer no, is no. no. Um, so I like if I were if I were writing this test that you're okay. looking at right here. Now, by the way, the MCAT's medical school aptitude or medical school. I don't know. What, what, I, I I have a chart here that said what it was. Uh, but anyway, this is this is the test you take if you want to go to med medical school and if you get a good score. They like you more than if you didn't get a good score. Anyway, um, these things are like your certification exams and ultrasound mode. They're multiple choice. But I would just have the first line. Uh, so if this were, a, a, you know, for asking you on, on, on your final exam, it would just be uh, number 57 would just be what is the total volume of the gas exchange in region of the lung? And you, it, it would be a free response, not multiple choice. Uh, it turns out, though, that uh, there's a variety of problems in your book, and I thought this gave me an opportunity to think about it. And one of your classmates suggested uh, that we do some group work here, you know, and I said, well, we'll, yeah, we'll try it and see. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to debrief with Linda, and students might say, oh, we hated that. It was a waste of time or, or something. It might really be good, so we'll see how all that happens. Um, and they should be back soon. So no, it's not going to be a choice. It will be um, just something, and you come up with a number and tell me a number and units. Ooh. 
Linda's spending a lot of time with him. Maybe this is a good thing. I, I don't know. We will see. Now, is it different groups in small in the group? Yeah, or? I think. Okay, Linda, are, is everybody back? So I had to go through and upload the PowerPoint for everyone. So they have only like just started working in group three. Well, th this this is not grade affecting. And yeah. by the way, I want to do a debrief on you and see, you know, what we need to do to make this better. Uh, why don't you bring, can you just bring them back? Yeah, I can do that. Bring everybody back, please. Let's... Oh, we're back. Your people are back then? Working on reconnecting right now. Okay, people are back now, I'm assuming then. Linda, right? Yes. Okay. So uh, let's just look at some answers here. You can work on this, you know, these things some more. And uh, I am going to do a debrief with Linda as to how well we thought that that works. And uh, if you, uh, I'll tell you what we'll probably do. Maybe we'll do a poll uh, at the end and say, you know, uh, and, and Linda, you can think about this. It might be, I never want to do that again. Or, gee, that would have been good if, if you know. Anyway, let's go. Let's look at number 57 then. We'll go to the solutions, Linda. Okay, I'm going to use this piece of um, I don't know, pencil up here or something. So, volume is equal to the number of these A things times the average. Alveoli. Yeah, uh, alveoli. And uh, so it's the average volume times the number of those we have. And they say note that, oh, that was micrometers, and this is the conversion factor between those. Again, that will be given to you, and it's in your book now. Here's the number of those uh, alveoli, and this is the volume per alveoli, and that is micrometers cubed, okay? And so what happens here is, and Sydney, I know that uh, she put that over one before, so maybe that's a good thing to do, but I canceled those guys out with each other. And then... Uh, what happens then is that here's a conversion factor between meters and micrometers. So you see the micrometers cancel with um, one of these micrometers. Oh, it's being cubed. So it ends up all of that will cancel because this is being cubed here. You have to use properties of exponents. And then here's the conversion factor for this. And when you do this one, uh, what happens is that these things will happen. You get liters. So the answer is two liters. Okay, so then that was C, I guess. Okay, the volume of a sphere is this, and we've already talked about that. Notice that here we're talking about micrometers being meters, but also we have millimeters flying about this, this problem. So we have to solve for R in this equation right here. I see we know the volume. And so this is like an algebra thing. So you solve for that. And I guess um, the diameter is two times R. So that's going to be two times uh, the, the uh, volume of each one of them is, let's see, the volume of the, oh, I, I'm sorry. That was the, um, that was the um, radius. Okay. And notice, okay, so that is the radius. And uh, whenever you you solve it, that you know this is what you get for that number, and then you have to convert that into millimeters, I guess. And so the correct answer was A. And the last one, uh, the graph shows nearly a horizontal line. It isn't really going up or down. It's a matter of interpretation. So that says that the average volume of the alveoli is not dependent on total lung volume and so that answer would have been c okay linda let's just go ahead and advance this slide please all right uh, now we're going to do some more problems 
And Linda, I think the way these are going to work, I am watching the time for you guys, so that's that's good. Then we're going to do 48 in, in, in 49. But I'm going to read 48, and while I'm doing that, Linda's going to be writing down some of these numbers or you know whatever needs to have uh, here. Okay. Um, and this is about the world's tallest building. Suppose that you drop a marble on the top of the uh, building in Dubai, okay, which is uh, 830 meters tall. That is way taller than the Sears Tower. Uh, if you ignore air resistance, how long will it take for the marble to hit the ground? I guess you dropped a marble. And how fast will it be going just before it hits? Okay, so Linda uh, has that. So what we're going to do is we're going to advance the slide. And we're going to work this so I have the pencil here, okay? Now, it is important, so this is like the big old building, okay? And it's important, and I don't think we threw the marble, I think we just dropped the marble. So an important thing is that the initial velocity of the um, marble is zero because we just dropped it. We do have to think about what does up, what does up mean and what does down thing uh, mean, but we're going to take down to be, um, negative okay so that means that the acceleration in this case this is the acceleration due to gravity and by the way your book might use uh and i really didn't check sometimes they use plus or minus but we're taking this to be minus and i think our book's going to use i'm going to use anyway is 9.8 meters per second squared because we talked about that being the uh, you know, the proper units. Now, I think, Linda, this was 830 meters. Yep. Okay, so that's what's going on. But you see, we had an equation that we learned last time uh, that says, and um, it says that, um, let's see, uh, that the change in distance um, In fact, I'm just going to do it this way, change in distance. Now that's, and you might say, oh, I think that should be a Y, and maybe I should have made it a Y, but I can't erase very effectively here. So the change in distance, we said, was the initial velocity uh, times T plus one-half G squared okay now what happens here then is that uh, <clears throat> excuse me this is going to be 830 you might say oh my god I have to use the quadratic formula well not yet because you see that's equal to zero now, if that wasn't equal to zero you would but see that's just a big old zero and Linda I think this is 4.9 And, um, uh, gosh, I guess I'm calling it positive. The acceleration, uh, the, the acceleration is a vector quantity, so it's whatever this direction is. So if I call this zero, this would be negative in. Linda says this is on slide 31, so. Yeah, the equation there. that you used. Okay. Wait, it's, if you have something to go to, go ahead and me there okay but it's going to erase everything on this slide let's don't do that uh, somebody asked <laughs> and I, i'm sorry i did see the question but i don't remember who it was where the hell do the they didn't say hell and i shouldn't have said that either. i have a better vocabulary than that uh, but anyway where did the um 4.9 come from i took one half times 9.8 to get 4.9 and i did that in my head so, Linda, we're just going to do this here, okay? So, and you do need these units to make this come out right. But you see you're taking, uh, it, it, I shouldn't say trust me, but it, the units do come out right. So, what we're going to get is that the time it takes 
is equal to, and you got to do a little bit of stuff here, uh, but you divide both sides by this. So this is Linda's going to be doing 830 divided by 4.9. So you get about 169.4. And then a big old square root of that. <clears throat> so you get about 13. Okay, so it takes 13 seconds for this uh, marble to fall <clears throat> from that. And um, I think I saw a Mission Impossible um, episode for Tom, um, oh, what's his name, Cruz. Tom Cruise jumps off this building and, uh, you know, so anyway. So you said it's about 13? Yep. And that's seconds if you work through that. Okay. So that's how we would do that. I should pause and say, do we have questions on this or are we okay? Linda, let's go back and read uh, whatever that other one. No one seems to be having questions. Let's go back and read. So that there was a second part to this question. Oh, what did it? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. It was how fast is it going before it hits the ground? Oh, okay. Well, we, we can do that because we know that the velocity is equal to uh, the, the initial velocity plus, and by the way, the initial velocity in this problem was zero, plus the acceleration, which in this case is not uh, 9.8 times the time. See, this was V is equal to V zero plus, and this is the acceleration times the time. And you see, we found in part A, we found that. So this is 9.8 times 13. And Linda knows that the, um, and the units of this is going to be meters per second. And this was zero for this problem. It's not always zero. And Linda will tell us a number. I'm getting 127.4. Of course, it's going down, and it depends on how you do those signs. Uh, okay, and there was a question that was asked in the comment box, and Linda answered it yes, so maybe that is good. Yeah, uh, it is the acceleration due to gravity, and in fact, there's a there's a there's a strobe picture later in the PowerPoints. I don't know if we're going to get to it because I always watch the clock for you. I know what time it is. Uh, but this one is finished. Let's go look at number 49, Linda. Go back and we'll read it because I don't think we read it yet. Huh. This would be a good problem for you guys to, you know, try on your own. It's about a tennis ball on Mars. And you see Mars has, is less massive than the Earth. So you see the acceleration due to gravity on Mars is, and you got to know this because you might say, well, well Damn, you mean the acceleration due to gravity on Mars is, um, is in grams? No, it's not. This is kind of a physics thing. It's 37.9 or almost 38% the acceleration on um, Earth. So you see this, is, this, this little G thingy is, um, is 9.8. You might say, how am I supposed to know that? That's just kind of the way physics is. Uh, but this is kind of a thing, and it, it talks about the ball going up and the ball going down. This would be a good problem for you to, you know, to to think about and and you know, give a go and ask questions of Linda or me or somebody uh, as you do this. So Linda, let's go ahead. We'll we'll try to do some more things. We've got about 12, 14 more minutes, or no, 12, 13 more minutes. Okay. Uh, hmm. Wow. Okay. Um. I don't know if we'll do this next time or not. By the way, Linda, um, I'm going to pause and and um, why don't you be thinking, if you will, about um, some kind of a poll to figure out if the students liked that group work or if they hated it or whatever. And we shouldn't throw the word hate around lightly, but just I, I want to maybe it's thumbs up, thumbs down. I don't know, Linda. You'll figure out something. Okay, but we're not going to do this one right now, although. This is a good example, and you'll have this one when to post these things. This is talking about blood flow in the heart, and it's a, it's you know it's it's some good problems like that. So Linda, let's go and see what else we've got next. Oh, that was the answer to that one. Okay, now this problem is kind of involved, so we're going to be working through this. Linda, I am watching the clock. 
and I'm going to give you about oh two minutes at the end to sort of poll, and we'll figure out if we're ever going to do that again. Uh, okay. But this this is really a very good problem, and I do have a complete solution here. We might not finish the solution today, but maybe we'll do some of it. And um, some of you might read this and say, damn, there's a lot. I shouldn't say damn either. My vocabulary is better than that. You might say, wow, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of math in here, and there is. And uh, there's a lot of physics in here, too. And it's a vector problem. And you might say, wow, this is involved. That's kind of what physics is about. That's one of the reasons ultrasound works as well as it does, because there's a lot of physics things. OK, so here is the story. The golfer is attempting to hit a golf ball from a sand trap into a hole that is three meters away. Now, three meters is about nine, uh, it's a little over nine foot. You see this guy's in the sand trap, and, and, and he uh, is going to be hitting this, um, this, this golf ball. And the hole is three meters away from where the ball is. So you kind of say, well, we're going to talk about, you know, how he hits the ball and stuff like that. And that is what you're going to do. And the hole on the green often is at an elevation. You can see it's higher than the ball, too, because it's higher because it is 0 0.3 meters above where the ball is. And, and some of you are maybe thinking, damn, it almost looks like it. I, I keep doing that. I'm sorry. Anyway, <laughs> some of you are looking at that and saying, hey, I think I see a triangle there. And yes, you do. Okay, so there's a triangle. Let's see what else. If the golfer hits the ball at an angle of 60 degrees, that means this little theta thing here is 60 degrees, and that could have to do with this club and how he strikes the ball and everything else. Above the horizontal, that means above the horizontal. That's the picture. What must the speed <clears throat> e sub zero of a ball for it to go directly into the hole without rolling along the green? And, of course, I know... Many of you have probably seen, I bet fewer of you have struck balls that, uh, that actually did this. Um, uh, but um, uh, it, go, it just goes in the air and goes in the hole directly. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. All right, uh, so what speed would he have to strike it at that angle to have it go exactly in there? Now, golfers don't calculate this when they're there. But they've played a lot of golf and they know how hard to hit the ball and it's a lot of skill that's involved as i get but we're just calculating the physics of this okay and then we have other questions too but let's deal with one question at a time so we want to know at what speed v0 of the ball must it be hit so it goes up there at this angle and it falls directly into the hole and we might have to come back and do some more of these next time um but that's okay. So, Linda, let's advance uh, the slide, and we'll talk more about this. All right. Now, these equations should look familiar because what we have is, and, and here we have, uh, we're not using X or Y, we're using R, but R, the position of the uh, ball, is the initial position of the ball uh, plus the initial velocity, which we don't know, times the time plus one half the acceleration times the time squared. So this is very much the kind of equation that we used last time for this. And uh, so that's, uh, that's good. And we also used this equation on the last one. We said that the velocity of the ball is equal to the initial velocity, how, and that's one of the things we want to find uh, when uh, this, uh, this guy strikes the ball, plus the acceleration times the time. Now, we are free a little bit to create our coordinate system. And so what happens here is we're going to just call this place where the ball is sitting 0, 0, because it's easy to calculate. So this ball starts at 0, 0. And what happens is, go in the hole, as I said in Caddyshack, what happens is, this guy has to strike it, and it has to go three meters this way. At the same time, it goes up exactly 0 0.3 meters to land exactly in the hole. 
and you can say, oh yes, there is a triangle happening. And you might say, wow, these are the vectors we studied, and you bet you that we, they are. And here's something that uh, I haven't necessarily talked about. It turns out that the, um, that the um, velocity in the x and y directions are independent with one with another, and I will talk a little bit about that later. So you see we can treat those differently. So here's what we have then, is we have that velocity in the x and y directions are these, and that's just the vector decomposition of this. And we know that the acceleration in the y direction was minus g. Now they're using that to be minus, so that's going to be minus 9.8 meters per second square. And the acceleration in the a direction is, there is no acceleration in the a direction because there's not any force. And so what happens is the only acceleration here, the only force that's going to be here is the force of gravity. So this is going to be zero. So let's see, let's see what is happening. Well, V0 uh, then, it, so we have this equation. It has V0 in, and we have this. Now X then is going to be, there's no acceleration. So this part is zero. So in the X direction, this is V0 cosine of theta times the T. And that's because distance is equal to rate times the time. OK. And so, uh, and Linda, uh, I think what we're really going to do next time, uh, and next time it's going to, I guess, be on Thursday, I'm going to ask, maybe, I guess I could make this into a video. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but Linda, next time we're going to start with this because I'm just going to get in the middle of this and I'm not going to, you know, have any closure on this. So we're going to rewind and we're going to talk about this problem kind of from the outset. But we will go through the complete uh, solution to this. Um, and, uh, and, and you know, you've got low stakes assessments, you know, things to read. And I'm going to be making videos for you guys to look at uh, and things like that, even though we're not meeting in this. Uh, cyber classroom on um, uh, on Tuesday because you all are going to be voting or watching election returns or whatever. And you can watch your election returns and do math at the same time. Uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, okay, uh, Linda, you want you've got four minutes to do your little survey, I guess. Okay. And, and, and go ahead, and I'll let you structure it and everything else. Please go ahead. Please weigh in. You're not getting graded on this. We genuinely don't care what the answer is. <laughs> well, I, but an I answer care. would be nice. I, mean, I, I, I care because I love you all. I want to know the answer, but um, I'm okay with whatever you guys say. Wow, this is neck and neck. This is kind of like the election. You vote or you can't complain about anything. Now, Linda, I don't think there's an electoral college, is there? And and it looks like there's 17 people, so there can't. Does that count us? Yeah. Okay, but there's 15 then. It's still it. it so there's be. one person that hasn't voted. Oh my God, they get to decide. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't vote, Linda decides. So I'm curious, were most of the people who said yes in groups one or two? Feel free to just speak up or answer in the chat. No. 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 Yeah, I kind of assumed that the people who had more time to work and maybe discuss would feel more strongly that maybe we should try it again. Whereas the people who were in group three maybe didn't get enough time to actually talk about the problem. 
So maybe that's why they're more inclined to say no. No, I, yeah, and I, I don't know. We we can talk about this, but it, it the way this vote came out, uh, you know, we we won't be doing this at least the same way uh, again. Uh, okay, so um, let's just see what the next slide is. And again, I do know what time it is, but that didn't take very long to do that. So we talked about that. So huh, I guess we let's see what the next. Uh, now we've talked about all this stuff. So I, I guess we uh, I guess we did all this. So we're going to be posting some more low stakes assessment. Watch because I am planning on making videos uh, in addition to accommodating students, which I plan to always do, uh, and grading midterms, which I hope I don't have to do all the time. Um, I also had a whole bunch of meetings that I wasn't excited about going to, but I had to go. So anyway, Jessica has a, Jessica has a question. Uh, there will be office hours. My office hours will happen on Tuesday. So is that what you were going to ask? No, I was going to ask if um, it's about like the breakout rooms. I guess my question is, does it get recorded when we go into the breakout rooms? I don't think it did record the breakout rooms. I think it only recorded the main room. Because I know, for like, at a, like a point standpoint of like me, I like to rewatch videos after I watch them. Because sometimes, depending. Maybe be late because of work or whatever the case may be because I know if we do the breakout rooms and then we go over the problems in the breakout rooms but we don't know how to do them how can we go back and watch a video to see if that's my yeah. only concern how can yeah, I, I think the breakout that? rooms are more just to kind of encourage more discussion between you guys oh, so okay. it's not just you sitting and watching for an hour and 15 minutes I see what you're saying, but will we go over the, I guess my question is, will we go over whatever we're working on in the breakout rooms, will those questions? Yeah, anything that we discuss in the breakout rooms, then we would end up talking about in the main room together. Okay, perfect. So then either way, it doesn't matter because we'll be able to see. Okay, okay. I, think, I think we're almost um, almost done here. Somebody asked if I was going to have office hours uh, on Tuesday. Oh, why not? Um, I don't have to, but I love you guys, okay, so I will do it. <laughs> Um, and, and we'll see. Linda will probably not be doing that because Linda's a very busy young woman. I know that and she deserves some time off. Uh, okay, uh, we're, uh, let's see, what do I say? Time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. Uh, and I'm going to go find my food and then I will um, uh, be doing some office hours at 730 tonight. I'm done. Thank you, Linda.